Well, look, um, I think with these things, people are getting confessional about what they were doing in 1997. So I was a postgraduate student in Strasbourg at the time, and I was also moonlighting for an MEP, Carol Tung. That was the Tung job that I did for my period <laughs> with her. And um, But I had had brushes with um, New Labour, gosh, I guess uh, 1993, the summer holidays from uh, Cambridge University, where I was an undergraduate, I had a, I don't think they were called internships then, work experience, at the IPPR, and there weren't enough desks, so I sat at the <laughs> foot of one of a young chap called David Miliband, mm -hmm. who everyone said will go on to do great things, and he certainly did. And in fact, I was on his um, election leaflet of 2010. It was one of those David Miliband pops up in your front room uh, events that was going on around the country, so there was a nice still picture taken from there, and that I was the poster child of that sadly failed campaign. Um, but look, we were given a set of different questions to answer today, and they included things like the role of think tanks in all this, uh, the future of European social democracy. I think there were four different ones, weren't there? What were the others? Yeah, so um, what, da, can da, Labour, da. what can Labour learn, if anything, from New Labour? Centre yep. left, navigate the politics of identity. Um, to what extent it should cooperate with progressive parties, learn from social democratic parties in Europe, the role of think tanks and progressive thinkers. So. Right, so quite a, quite a shopping list there. So I think... <laughs> I, I think I'll start with the first one. What, if anything, can current Labour learn from new Labour? Um, and what I think I'll do with this is turn it into, because it was four minutes, wasn't it? Four yeah. bullet points, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Um, and then the other stuff about the identity politics, don't ask me what is a woman, please. <laughs> uh, that kind of thing can come out in the discussion, I think. Um, so first of all, I think any future programme that we do should be relevant. And in 1997, those five pledges on the card, we all know them, they, were, they did chime into sort of concerns of the time, yeah. waiting lists, of the NHS, class sizes, antisocial behaviour, all those things. And, you know, we do need to, I guess, uh, create that, recreate that broad coalition, a seat like my own. So, sorry, yes, I became, uh, yes, uh, Sunder Catwaller was saying that there weren't any Asian women MPs till 2010. Well, they even let in someone like me in 2015. So, my um, childhood seat where I grew up and where I still live, Ealing Central and Acton, was number 57 or 58 on the target list, depending on whether you count the Corby by-election. And we managed to snatch that one from the Conservatives, although number one, which was Thurrock, was not taken. So it was a weird election 2015. And um, yeah, I'm still somewhat pinching myself that I'm there. I was an academic before that. And the kind of things I wrote about, I did a lot on suburbia. And I think, you know, that's a useful concept to think about how we get those aspirational people. Um, um, so sort of, yes, yeah, suburbia was my thing, but also I'm having a flashback to 2007 when I organized a conference of 10 years on of New Labour. Sarah Child spoke, Tim Bale spoke, all the same cast lists <laughs> when I was an academic at Kingston University. And again, within those timeframes, we've seen so much change. I'd say um, that the crash of 2008 and also 9-11 sort of, shape the contours of all the stuff we've been talking about today. So yes, be relevant. Um, tap into those sort of key concerns. And I think aspiration is something that we should look at. The suburban person who wants to, I don't know, have a lean at the back of their house or whatever. I, I mean, I would say assisted places, fine. I think some of our policy on private schools, I have 16 of them in my and again, I have, a, I think it's 60% uh, of my constituents are graduates. Tap into to win and to keep winning. Um, so, yeah, I think some of our policy in 2019, um, I think, went a little bit too far on the old private schools. It's something that if it was so great, Tony Blair would have done it, Clem Hatley would have done it. It doesn't really win a single vote. Aspirational people who don't go to private school send their kids to private schools, but might want to dream of doing that someday. I, I sort of have some disagreement with that policy. I think we're scaling it back now. Um, I think also be believable. So the 1997 pledges, it's been said that they were very modest. And we know that in reality, the long list that Polly Toynbee read out, I think she didn't mention free piece of fresh fruit in every school classroom. I think she didn't 
Uh, in, there were so many of them. So that original pledge card, I think I've got a 2010 from the Gordon Brown election t-shirt with all the policies front and back, uh, all the achievements, because there were so many. So yes, be believable. So that was, sorry, by 2010, there were a lot more than just the original five. But in 2019, I think the policy offer was just too copious. Um, um, you know, there had to be addendums. All the, I never saw a print copy of that manifesto, but all the stuff about waspy women came during the campaign itself. Free broadband. Some of these things just seemed to, to maybe unrealistic and copious. Be radical. So again, 1997, those policies were believable, but, you know, things like devolution, which, again, you could argue was Boone and Bain respect but anyway they they were a step change with what was going on before um about you know all that stuff about new britain young britain all that rhetoric from the beginning and be positive the white heat of technology all those sort of old slogans are forward facing not inward looking not about the labor party as a student politics thing with its own bits of factions arguing against each other and you know, the, I guess, message discipline, it sounds a bit sinister, but, you know, in 1997, we were disciplined enough to win. So are you making faces that I've gone over four minutes already? Sorry, I can talk forever. <laughs> I used to have to do two-hour <laughs> sessions on these kind of things. Um, so I can make it as long or short as you want. But if four minutes is up, I will finish That's right perfect. there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.